Nobody knows why after the Big Bang, gravity changed gear and became weaker. Hawking's theory of everything should reveal the inner workings of the universe, but it can't explain this. Something is wrong with the blueprint. He sets to work trying to puzzle it out. He now has the top minds in the field working with him. But only a few members of this inner circle can understand his speech. He must painstakingly dictate his scientific papers. The process is slow, but he is making progress. His family worry he is pushing himself too hard. There was always this terrible, terrible fear whenever anything went wrong or when he started choking or coughing or he got an infection, that this was it. Because you just never knew what might happen next. Then in 1985, on a trip to Geneva, Switzerland, tragedy strikes. Age 44, Hawking collapses with pneumonia. An emergency tracheotomy saves his life, but severs his vocal cords. Unable to communicate, completely cut off from the world, Hawking plunges into his own black hole. 6,000 miles away in Lancaster, California, speech software designer Walt Waltos gets an urgent call from a friend about a new client. He mentioned that he was a physics professor at Cambridge. I said, uh, gee, that sounds like Stephen Hawking, you know? And he said, well, I'm not allowed to say. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, if it is, I'll donate whatever he needs. Hawking is able to make a slight movement with his fingers so he can use a switch. Waltos designs an ingenious system that helps predict the words Hawking will use. I choose the letter B, and I'm going to choose the word black here. Now, after I selected the word black, and in Stephen's case, the word black is almost always going to be followed by the word whole. Now, if I want to speak that, I can just choose the speak command here. Black hole radiation. Waltos sends the machine to Hawking, and the voice we hear today is born. I like my present voice, even though it has an American accent. It's the breakthrough Hawking needs to carry on with his work. The first time I came back to see him after the, the initial time, he was scanning at 10 steps per second. This is blinding speed. <laughs> He'd sort of risen like the phoenix from the ashes to be this new character with an American electronic voice. And he was so sort of good-humoured about it that you just felt admiration, I suppose. Never in these circumstances have I ever seen him show frustration. He just keeps going at it. Hawking returns to Cambridge and, click by click, presses on with his work. He employs a team of graduate students to help with the computations. I'm going to talk about he's been given another shot at cracking the theory of everything. And he's more determined than ever. <laughs> 